The back contract must be aware of the price of the collateral. This price is set by an authorized account by calling the function file inside the back contract. Here you can see if what is equal to spot, then update the iok.spot with data. IOKS is a mapping from bytes32 that identifies a collateral to a struct called IOK which holds some information about a collateral, one of them being the price of the collateral. And this price is used to determine whether a CDP can be liquidated or not. And for the spotter to call the function file, any user will be able to call the function poke. When they do this, the spotter contract will get the value of the price of the collateral stored in another contract called pip. It will call a function called peak inside the pip contract to get the price of the collateral and then set it inside the back contract. So in this video, we'll write the spotter contract that is located inside a file called spot.so. I'll first copy all of this code. And inside my code editor, I've created a file called spotter.so inside the folder stablecoin. Here, I'm going to paste the code that I just copied. And before I make any change to this code, I'm going to first run a forge format to format this code. Inside my terminal, I'll type forge fmt. Okay, and then let's go back to our code. Okay, let's start rewriting this contract. First, I'll specify the Solidity compiler version. And then next, inside here, it defines two interfaces, bat-like and pip-like. Bat-like refers to the interface for the bat contract. In our code, we renamed this as CDP engine. So let's rename this as ICDP engine. And I'll do the same for all occurrence of bat like inside this code. Now notice that the function inside the back contract that the spotter will call is file. We renamed this function as set. If we take a look at the CDP engine, we can see over here that the function that's going to be called is this one. And inside here, we can also see that if key to specify is equal to spot, then it will update the spot for a collateral. Okay, the next interface that I'm going to rename is pip -like. This, I'll rename this as price feed, i price feed. It has a single function called peak, which will return bytes32 and boolean. Bytes32 will represent the price of the collateral. For our purpose, let's change the data type to uint256. I think it's easier to understand that prices are represented as UN256 instead of bytes32. And then the next boolean will represent whether there was any error when the function peak was called. Okay, and then moving on, inside the contract spotter, we have the usual mapping of words, rely and deny, and also the modifier alt. This is the logic that handles authorization for the spotter contract. We already wrote this code inside our library we have a contract called alt. Back inside our spotter contract, we can remove this. And the spotter contract will inherit the alt contract. And we also need to import this. So say import the alt contract from go one up, go to lib, and then alt.so. Next, we have a data structure called ILK. Let's rename this to collateral. So this will hold two information, the address of the price feed and a field called MET. So what is this MET? Here it says it is the liquidation ratio. And you'll see later what this MET represents. I'll just tell you it now. It represents the spot will be equal to the value that came from the price feed divided by this MET, liquidation ratio, MET. We'll come back to this again. So let's rename this to liquidation ratio. I should also mention the units that are being used here. The value that is returned by peak, so this will be the value of the collateral, is WED. And the unit of MAT is rate. Okay, moving on. Here we have IOK. Let's rename this to collateral. And I'll rename IOKS to collaterals. So it's a mapping from bytes32 that identifies the collateral to information about collateral, which holds the address of the price feed and the liquidation ratio of the collateral. Okay, next we have the contract called bat. We will rename this to CDP engine. And then we have a state variable called par. Reading the comments, it says ref per die. What par represents is the value of die in the reference asset. Since the reference asset is US dollar, this part will hold the value of die in terms of USD. Okay, and then moving on, we have a state variable called live. 
Again, we move the logic for live into another contract called circuit breaker. So we can remove this and then inherit the circuit breaker and then say spotter is circuit breaker. Okay, and then scrolling back down, we have an event called poke. It will emit the IOK. This will be the identifier of the collateral. Let's call this call type. The value given by the price feed and spot. Okay, let's move on to the constructor. So the bat, we renamed it as underscore CDP engine. We don't need a public keyword and authorization is handled by the auth contract. So we don't need this and we also don't need this. And then it sets par equal to one. Here one would represent, as you can see from here, 10 to the 27, 10 to the 27. Since the unit of par is ray and ray is 10 to the 27. Basically it is saying that par, the price of die in terms of USD is equal to one. Okay, moving on. The math libraries, I've already put all of the functions for the math library inside the contract, math.so inside the folder, lib. So going back to our spotter contract, we're not gonna need any of this code. What we'll need to do instead is import the math library. So let's just say import, we'll import everything from math. Okay, and then let's scroll back down. The first function we have is file. Similar to the back contract, this looks like it's gonna set some internal parameters and it can only be called by an authorized account. Let's rename this to be consistent with the CDP engine. Let's rename this to set. First, it checks that live is equal to one. We don't need this since we can put a modifier. The modifier that we'll need to put is called not stopped. Not stopped. And the same over here. So we have three functions all named the same called set with different parameters passed in. ILK, let's rename this to call type. This will identify the collateral type. And the mapping IOKS, we renamed it as collaterals. Next, it takes on two other parameters, what and then pip. What will tell us what state variable that this function will update. Let's rename this to key. And then the address, pip. So this function, if the key to update is specified as pip, then it will update the address of the price feed contract for the collateral type. Otherwise, if another key was passed, then it will revert. Okay, so moving on. The other function set, again, we have a what. Let's rename this to key. And then the data, we will keep it the same data. So if the key is par, then set par to data. And then we have one last function set. For the inputs, it's gonna take in call type, key, and data. If the key is liquidation ratio, then set the liquidation ratio for the collateral identified by call type to the data that was passed by the input. Okay, so that's the function set. Let's move on. So we have two other functions, function cage and function poke. Function cage is the easy one. You'll call this stop and only an authorized account can call this function. And then the function that we'll need to call to stop the contract is inside the circuit breaker, a internal function called stop. Going back to our code for the spotter contract, we'll just simply call the internal function stop provided by the circuit breaker contract. Okay, and then one last function, poke. Remember that this is the function that any user can call to get the value of the collateral from the price feed and then calculate the spot and then set the spot inside the back contract. I'll first rename the IOK to call type that's passed from the input. This function is gonna first get the price of the collateral by calling the function peak on the price feed that is stored inside a struct identified by the collateral ID call type. And it's gonna return bytes 32. This is inside the code of MakerDAO. However, we change this to UN256. And it's also gonna return a boolean, has. This tells whether there was any error or not. I'll rename this to okay. And then we have some complex math that's going on over here. Let's break this down. If there was an error, then for the spot, we will return a zero. If there was no error, if everything passed, if everything went okay, then we'll need to calculate the spot by performing this calculation. So what's going on over here? 
let's start with ardid and mop. These are functions that I moved over to the library called math. So I'll call math.ardiv, math.ardiv. And for multiplication, we can simply multiply it. So it will be val times 10 to the 9, and then ardiv by part. So what's the function ardiv? Well, let's go to the math library and see what it does. The function ardiv simply takes two inputs, x and y, and it does x times ray divided by y, where ray is the unit 10 to the 27. When I usually see these code that are hard to understand, I try to write it down as a comment. So what do I see here? We have spot is equal to, here I'll just worry about the case when ok is true. So we have r div, and what is being divided? This will be the numerator, and this will be the denominator. So we have for the denominator, we have liquidation ratio. We're dividing something by the liquidation ratio. And what is this something? What's well, val times 10 to the 9. And then we also have an internal call to the function ardib. So this val times 10 to the 9 is further being divided by part. And there we have it. This is what this part of the code is doing. Okay, but what is it doing? Well, let's start with this part of the code, since it's easier to understand. That will be the price of the collateral that was returned by the price feed, and the unit will be in red. Now the unit of par will be in red, and par represents the price of one die. We saw earlier that it was set to 1. Since the unit of par is ray, here we set it to 10 to the 27. So the unit of par is ray, and the unit of the value of the collateral is in red. To make the value of the collateral in units of ray, we need to multiply this by 10 to the 9. 10 to the 9. Where is 10 to the 18? Multiply that by 10 to the 9 and we'll get 10 to the 27. So that's the first part of the code. Then it's being divided by the liquidation ratio. Liquidation ratio. What it's doing here is setting a safety margin for the actual spot price of the collateral. The actual spot price of the collateral, let's say, is stored in the value that was returned from the price feed. We discount this by a liquidation ratio to provide a safety margin for the spot price. Let's go through an example of calculating the spot price with an actual liquidation ratio. Here I have the spotter contract on Etherscan. We will get the liquidation ratio by going down and then clicking on ILKS. And then inside here, we'll put in a collateral ID for ETH. And we get that mat is equal to this number. So what is this number? Well, let's paste this number, and we know that the unit is 10 to the 27. So let's just divide it by 10 to the 27 to see what we get. Equals 1.45. So let's say that the market price of ETH is currently $2,000. And then we divide this by the liquidation ratio, 1.45. And we get the spot that we stored inside the back contract will be 1,374. This will be the value of the collateral inside the back contract. Let's say that you lock one ETH inside the back contract and then borrow some DAI. With this spot price, if you borrow more than this amount, then your ETH will be liquidated. Okay, that is how the spot that is to be stored inside the back contract is calculated. Next, it calls the function set on the CDP engine. And for the collateral identified by quote type, it's going to set the spot to the value spot that was calculated over here. And lastly, it emits an event called poke. That completes the contract for the spotter contract. Let's try compiling this contract. Of type forge build. Okay, I see an error saying invalid implicit conversion of uint256 to bytes32. Let's go fix this. uint256. Try compiling again, and a contract compiles. 